What's going on guys? My name is Muddy Wolf and in today's video we are going to be looking at adding enemies to the scene. So this is actually not a planned video. I have no idea what I'm going to... Oh, I haven't basically written out the code or anything yet, so this is going to be done all on the fly. So if I make mistakes, please bear with me. However, the reason we're doing this is because somebody asked... Okay, cool, so we made a, a somewhere you can shoot, you can shoot, but there's nobody to shoot. So I was like, damn, you're right. We need somebody to shoot. So now we're going to make a game where you can shoot somebody. So we're going to add some enemies who just come straight at you. And you've just got to dodge and shoot the guys as best as possible. And that's, that's what we're going to do. So let's get started with an enemy. First thing I'm going to do is just... Um, by the way, just so before I'd say, um, this video is obviously a continuation on the last video we did. So if you haven't seen that video, check out the link in the description and go check out that video for us. So let's go to the object sprite and let's create uh, a triangle. I feel like triangles look like enemies. And we're going to name this enemy. Uh, let's just reset transform. Oh, well, not, not, no, we don't want to do that. I'm sorry. Bring this guy over here and there we go. So we've got a little enemy over here. Uh, now, what color is an enemy? Red. It's just always red. Now, let me check what it looks like again. Yeah, that's seeable. Uh, we'll make it a cooler red like. We'll bring it around here a little. We'll, we'll bring it down a little. There you go. That's a pinky red. So we'll take it. That's what we've got. So we've got the enemy. Cool. Now we need a... Is there a triangle? Tri uh, we need a polygon collider. There we go. A polygon collider here, which gives us a little triangle collider. There we go. We then need a rigid body 2D. And we're going to set this to... Uh, ooh, uh, where are we? Kinematic. There we go. Um, so we're going to have kinematic body here just because we're going to control this all via the script. Um, and everything can stay as it is. There we go. So let's now add an enemy script to our game. So just enemy, create an add. Um, now on our play, we just got to make sure he has the player tag here because we're going to hunt him down. Um, and there we go. So let's just have a look here. Enemy script is loading. We're going to double click that to open that up in Visual Studio Code. Okay, and it is open in Visual Studio Code. So here we go. We've got our enemy script. Now we need a few, a f well, a few things first. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a public transform that is going to be our target. Now we're going to hunt down the player. Uh, we could do this as a vector, but we'll, we'll get the whole transform. Um, we then we then need the speed of the enemy. Let's say three. I think three is a good speed and that's good for now. Now in here we could you what well, let's turn off copilot. Listen, copilot's trying to do the job for us. We don't need him to. We can code our own things. Um so we need a a method to actually get moving. Now we actually also need our rigid body to bit 2D. Uh and that could just be a private rigid body 2D, because we could just say in our start method, we're just gonna say RB is equal to get component rigid body 2D. Uh, and that will get our component for us. All right, next up is we need an, a fixed update method. Because we use velocity to get these guys moving. We also need an update method as well. And so I'm going to add all of these in. So in this one, we are going to need to uh, get the direction to the target. That's, that's true. Uh, and we're going to basically make him rotate towards the target. Actually, you know what? Yeah, we're just going to say here, rotate towards the target and then what we're going to do is uh move forwards because if we're always turning towards the target then we just need to move forwards and that's all we're going to do we also need a method to get the target so in here we'll say get the target there we go so we want to get the target rotate towards the target and then in our fixed update where we're going to do our uh, velocity stuff we're going to move towards the target so let's start off by getting the target so all we want to do why are you giving me up like copilot's disabled why are you still trying to do copilot -y things um we're gonna get target so we need a uh but we need to actually get this target. So how do we search for a target? Now there's multiple ways we could do this. Um, and let's create a function for it. Let's create a private void get target. Um, now what we want to do is just search for a target. So we're going to say game object dot find game object with tag. And the tag is going to be player. 
and we're just going to say uh, target is equal to game object dot transform, right? Because that's going to get our object player, and then we're going to get the transform off that player and sell it equal to our target, and then we're going to just say if no target get target. And there you go, that's all we need. So we're just gonna say, if there's no target, so if this doesn't exist, we're gonna get our target and then we're gonna aim straight for him. So that one is done, check. Now we need to rotate towards our target. So to rotate towards our target, we just need to get the target's position. So we're gonna say, if target, that is correct. We do wanna know if there is a target. We could do this in an else as well. So let's, I've just realized we can reuse this if statement up here. Um, we're going to make this a bit cleaner though, because I do prefer to have nice clean code. Um, and then we're going to say else. So if there's no target, we're going to get the target. Otherwise, we're going to rotate towards target. And there we go. And that needs to be a method we create. So let's create a private void rotate towards target. And let's just say voids there. Okay, before we add anything in the rotate towards, we need a variable for the rotate speed. So we're going to create a, a actual uh, rotate speed variable. We're going to say 0 0.0025. It needs to be quite small because the smaller it is, the slower it rotates. And if you go anywhere above like 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.01, it's actually still too fast for what we want. Uh, so I'm going to try like this and we'll change this up if we think it needs it. Now inside of our rotate towards, we want to get the direction or the kind of the two positions of where our, our target is. So we want to say the, let's create a vector two um, called target direction. And we'll set this equal to target dot position minus our transform dot position. We're just going to get us kind of like the direction of it. We then need to get the angle, which will be the how we have to rotate towards um, the player to actually, how, how much we have to rotate to actually face the player. So to do that, we need to just say vector, or sorry, a float angle is equal going to be equal to, and we're going to use a math here, math dot a tan to. And now we need to pass the y and the x of our target direction. So we want to say target.y and our target direction.x. We then want to times this by mathf.rad to degrees because this is giving us a rad when we want the degrees. And just because we're using the upwards position, so our forward facing enemy is actually facing upwards right now we need to minus 90 because it's currently this would actually get us the facing right so minusing 90 will say okay this is if we were facing upwards we then want to get a quaternion uh, which we're just going to call q and this is going to be quaternion dot euler and then we need to pass a new vector three and this vector three needs um three values we need the zero or the vector on the um, x, y, and the z will be our angle, because this is the one we're going to be rotating around. Finally, we just want to set our transform dot local rotation equal to a quaternion, and this time we're going to use slurp, so this will allow us to um, interpolate around these values, so it won't instantly turn towards the target instead it will take time and that's where our variable of rotate speeds comes in so let's just uh let's go along the lines of this will be our transform dot local rotation we're then going to get where we want to be which will be our q and finally we're going to get the rotate speed here as well and that should hopefully work so let's this just come in um and there we go make sure this is 0 0.00, .00 Two five, I think is a good speed. Um, we may need to tweak that, but let's have a look. So let's start the game, and there you go. You can see he now rotates towards the player. And if we go into our scene, you can see the forward of the enemy is right there. And as he gets closer, you'll see he actually rotates and he'll come towards us. And there you go. So now he can rotate towards us, but we still need to get him moving. So we need to move him forwards. 
And what we're going to do is we're just going to say our rigid body dot velocity is equal to uh oh sorry vector free dot up times and we can just say maybe oh our speed sorry we actually have a speed up here um and there you go so shorthand for writing up now this should get us always up but i may be wrong we sh will have to figure this out i may be wrong we'll find out in a second Cool, so let's just see if that drives him forward. And that's, and obviously by forward, he'll go forward to his rotation, which is going to be rotating towards us. If we now just allow him... Oh, he's disappeared. But I think if we zoom out, you can see... <laughs> that's the wrong way. Oh, he's going for effort up. And that's because he's going in the... This is up in terms of his... um The global position. We need to actually say transform dot up so that should hopefully get us the correct way one of these gets us the right way one of us gets us the wrong way i think we've done it in world where this one should give us the actual there you go so you can see now as we move he's going to rotate towards us and try and get us and we're going to have to dodge him and when he finally hits us he's just going to keep pushing us and pushing us and pushing us uh which will then add a kill to him so let's let's make our enemy dangerous now so we've now got him running towards us we can change the speed as well i think he's a bit slow potentially um but in here we want to get an on collision enter 2d we want to say if other dot uh compare tags no other dot game object dot compare tag and we want to check if he has the player tag now if he has the player tag we're just going to say other or destroy other dot game object um and that's just going to get rid of him completely we'll also say target is equal to null um which will just get us a null target and there you go so that should hopefully get us what we want to destroy us so let's have a look if he can now kill the player so the red enemy is obviously the big big bad guy and here he goes, he's doing his loop, he's 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 doing his very long victory loop. We should probably make his rotation a bit quicker. He's orbiting, he's orbiting us. This is kind of entertaining, actually. Uh, let's stop this and make his rotation a bit quicker. Let's put this to 0 0.025. I think it, I may have added an extra 0, which I shouldn't have. Here you go, so now look at that, that's much better. And if we stop and he hits us... We have been killed. Now, where do we get this error? Enemy 35. So, oh, let's go in here. Target is equal to... Oh, so we want to say... We actually want to put this in a... I guess we want to check if this exists as well. So we'll say if that, then we set the target. Otherwise, we don't set the target if we can't find it. Uh, and there you go. So we'll find the target and then we'll set it. So let's go back. Let's clear this. And we shouldn't get an error this time when we're killed. Hit play. And we're just going to let him come straight forward. We can even shoot him with bullets if we want to. Die, die, die. And boom. We are dead. We get no errors. He drives off screen. Perfect. So we have been destroyed. Now, one thing I want to say is we want to create a prefab for my enemy. Because we're going to want multiple enemies. We don't just want to fight one. We want a few of these guys. So let's add four enemies in. Now this is great and all, but we we're gonna wanna we're gonna wanna kill this guy, right? And guys, and I've just noticed we've actually added kinematic to our body type. When we don't actually need to, all we need to do is actually change this down to zero um, because we just don't want any gravity on him. Kinematic only really matters for when we're moving them inside a thing. But we're gonna be using physics on these guys, and we want them to be able to collide. So now, if we see if we round them up. You can see they're bashing into each other and our bullet actually hits them. That is amazing to watch. Um, but again, they don't die just yet. God, they do rotate really slow, don't they? We may need to speed up their rotation once again. So by the way, when I change these, I change them down here in the actual prefab now because that will stop them. Let's put it at 0.25. Hopefully that gives them enough rotation speed that there shouldn't be any issue. There you go. They kind of target on pre bam we're gone we're dead already 
That's nice. Cool. So let's now get our bullets colliding with the enemy. So but we're going to tag our bullets with a bullet uh, tag. So let's go back to our bullet here and apply the bullet tag. And then in our enemy script, so back to our enemy script, we want to go on collision enter other. So we want to say else if other dot game object dot compare tag is equal to bullet, we're going to destroy ourselves. Um, destroy game object for themselves. So this is going to destroy us. And just so we get rid of bullet two, we're going to make the other bullets. So we're going to say other dot game object also get destroyed. This is going to remove both us. At, oh, sorry, the enemy and the game object. So here we go. This should hopefully now be a playable mini game. Now we could add in spawning. So these guys keep spawning. Um, and boom, we're dead. There you go. So something you could do is you could add in a spawner that spawns these guys coming in at you. Um, and other ways. And obviously you could probably make the camera follow you too. So you're not being chased down by these guys forever. Um, but there you go. You can see how that works and how you can now add enemies to kill or kill you in the game. Now, I hope this answers the question we had in the Discord. Um, but if you want to see more on this 2D top-down uh, sort of game we're making, if you want to know more mechanics, you want to learn something specific, give me a shout in the Discord. The link will be down below. And just say, hey, or even just leave a comment saying, hey, I would like to see this. And I'll try and obviously cater to that and make a video continuing on. One thing we may be doing is some bullet time. So when you shoot your gun or when you press a specific key, you will slow down time so you can aim and shoot and get more accurate shots sort of thing. So some cool like slow down mechanic, time manipulation. Let me know what you want to see and we'll add it in here. We might even do a, t a dash where we can do like a super dash around. Uh, we'll see what goes on. And if you want me to add a spawner to this as well, let's get this a bunch of likes. Let's say 50 likes and I will do a spawning video so you can add an infinite spawning wave game. Uh, to this as well. So let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. Don't forget to join the Discord if you have any questions, and I will see you in the next video. For now, peace out.